If you watch this home performance channel and the upcoming Home Diagnosis TV series, then you know what a blower door test is. It is the most common way to test air leakage in any building, but it is not the most accurate way to test air leakage. There is a better way, and those of us who have been trained in blower door testing have heard the phrase tracer, tracer gas. gas test. My question always was, how exactly does that work? And I swear, I could not get anybody to tell me exactly how it works. So now that we're involved in a home chem experiment and we've been learning all about chemistry, I figured now is a good time to go ahead and get this straight and make a video about it. So I'm going to show you what I learned. Uh, I took a very short college course with Attila Novoselic and Steve Bourne over lunch at a Thai restaurant. And this is my textbook. This is what a tracer gas test looks like. To me, this is the best way to learn anything. Those of you who know me know that I do not have a degree in engineering. I do not have a degree in building science. I have a degree in music. And I learned that taking smart people to lunch is the best way to get information. You need to come loaded with good questions because you want to make your time worthwhile. This is the kind of question that I wanted to get an answer to. Now for any tracer gas test, you are going to need a gas tank like this, a tiny one, or like these great big ones. And it comes in a couple different varieties. You can do a simple carbon dioxide tracer gas test. And that is a very easily gettable chemical. It already exists inside of your house at levels around 400 parts per million. That's kind of everywhere. So what you do is just introduce a higher level and wait for it to get back down to the reasonable level. If you can't use carbon dioxide because you're also measuring things like carbon dioxide levels based on ventilation need, then you can use sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. You can measure in parts per trillion if you have a good enough meter for that, which means that you can use just a tiny bit of gas. SF6 is not good for the environment. But funny enough, apparently tennis balls used to be filled with SF6. So if you ever hit a tennis ball real hard, then you probably released more SF6 into the atmosphere than you will with one of these tests. This is generally only used in academic building science because frankly, it takes a long time. That's why I am not going to be doing it demonstrations other than this one for you. So what we're gonna do is inject this gas into the house and then watch what happens to it over time. There are two kinds of tracer gas tests. There is decay testing and there is continuous injection. Let's start with decay. So with decay testing, we have monitors like this in every room. And for carbon dioxide, these are pretty readily available. You are gonna spend thousands of dollars though on this kind of equipment. We inject 4,000 parts per million into a room where the air handler is gonna pick it up and distribute it around the house. And then when we reach steady state, meaning every room has the same high level of that tracer gas, then we shut off the air handler, shut off the HVAC and any fans, and just watch the house drift down. The graph looks like this. You can see that all the rooms reach an equilibrium, then they all start falling off. Some of them will get a little bit higher because they end up uh, absorbing some of the flow because of course, with any air leakage conversation, we're talking about three main forces in a home that are affecting the way that air is moving around. We've got what's going on inside the house, what's going on outside the house, and what's going on in the relationship between inside and outside. Inside is HVAC, we shut that off. Now we have left still what's going on outside, which is weather and wind, and the relationship between inside and outside, which has to do with the delta T, the temperature difference, and the height of the building. What you are doing with a decay test is watching it run from 100%, where every room is the same at, at a high level, we'll call that 100%. We're gonna watch it drift down through one time constant to 33%. Then we're gonna watch it drift down again to a third of that, which is 11%. That's the second time constant. Then we're gonna watch it drift from 11% down to 4%. That's the third time constant. That's three whole time constants, and that gives you a pretty accurate test for what the natural ventilation rate is inside the house through unintentional gaps and cracks in your enclosure. Now decay testing is not for what the academic building scientists call characterizing a building. It will not give you literally what happened on a given day. What it gives you is a ballpark figure. Therefore, it is not much better than a blower door test. So we haven't really reached the point of, wow, this is way better. What comes next is the continuous injection test. And for that, you are gonna need the specialized gas. You are gonna need a flow meter so that you know exactly how much is being introduced all the time. And you're gonna start measuring. 
This is so specialized that I personally can't think of a use for it in private home performance practice. But for the home chem experiment, they wanted to know literally what the infiltration rate was for the entire 28 days of the home chem experiment. So you'll watch each of these rooms, how leaky each of them are, how they're responding to the weather outside, how they're responding to the height of the house and the delta T, all that stuff. It'll look a lot more like an EKG, how that gas is constantly being introduced and being decayed at every moment. That is the end-all be-all of tracer gas testing. So I hope that this has been illuminating to you as it has been to me. I really enjoy now knowing exactly how that works, even though I am never going to do that test. It's way too complicated and way too much equipment. So please comment, like, subscribe if you have things to add from having done tracer gas tests, especially in the private market. We'd really like to hear about that. And tune in next time.